I want to make sure that we have women or whatever other kind of diversity we can achieve, but I am nervous about making mandates that, that may cause the best candidate to not be able to serve. As to the, but I, but I also say if, if we have a situation where there never seems to be the diversity being generated, the council has to step in and do something about that. As to term limits, I'm not in favor of term limits, but I'm not in favor of people on committees being able to automatically say, I want to stay on this committee and be able to do it. I think we need to consider the whole pool of, of applicants and make sure that we do have an opportunity for people to serve that want to serve. Especially, we have a lot of new uh, residents in this city over the past few years with all the growth we've had. And it's not fair to them to, to be unable to serve on these committees and provide the input that this city needs. We need that. So, uh, not not the definitive answer, but uh, that's just the way I feel. I just don't like hard and fast rules in that area. Thank you. Uh, gender balance. I think we're we're already uh, mandated to try to get uh, the gender balance in all our appointed committees. Uh, we try to do that as much as possible, but I also agree that we need to have somebody that is qualified, not just somebody that wants to put their name in and they have no background. And uh, and we do have people that are do have the background. Those are the people that we need to appoint, whether it's it's a man or a woman. Term limits uh, for elected officials, I don't see how you can even consider that. Uh, the president is set for that, but it looks like everybody else that's in politics, there's no term limits on it. Uh, maybe some governors, they do have term limits, but for a small city, uh, I don't think that you can, you can actually get into term limits for elected officials. And we do work hard for the gender balance in our committees and that goes back out to the people put your name in we have a, uh, a form that you fill out that what board you would like to be on those are the people that we look at when it comes time to put somebody on a committee so if you want to be on a committee get your name in there because we do have openings and have turnover on all every one of these boards so get out and put your name on it so we, we can look at you uh, I'm not at all politically correct ever I'm honest and um, I didn't know I, I honestly didn't assume there would be a question really this uh, philosophical maybe um, but I would like to start off by telling you that uh, the other year I worked on exactly one campaign committee it was for a woman about twice my age who had never been in office before and not only did she win but she beat two incumbents so I'm not at all a bigot, and uh, you know, diversity as it comes. Uh, there's not a ton of diversity in Leclerc, but um, you know, I don't. It's not my job to uh, make the town more diverse necessarily. Uh, I really try and stay focused on on city business. As far as um, you know, gender balance on boards. You know, I've been on a committee. Uh, we, when I was on the IT committee, you know, our biggest problem was holding the quorum, honestly. Uh, but I'm very vocal, both outside of council chambers and from the bench. Uh, you know, you can find video footage of me saying this at a city council meeting that I strongly encourage all of you to join some sort of a, a committee. Uh, that's where I started, uh, helping LeClaire. Um, I feel that it's honestly kind of a duty of mine. I think that it's really necessary for us to continue to succeed as, as a community. I'll be quite frank with you. I think uh, some people complain too much, to be quite honest, and, and don't put themselves on committees. I'm not a complainer. I'm a doer. That's why I involve myself. I know that it's not going to be for everybody, but uh, but please, you know, I've encouraged neighbors to join committees with me. Um, as far as term limits, I'll also give a very honest answer. People ask all the time because this comes up, and I love, I, as a political scientist, I love, uh, or someone who majored in that, I love having these types of conversations with people. And uh, it comes up often, especially in regards to like Congress and stuff, you know. Um, it's a great idea. I don't know if I'd stand in the way of it, but I'll tell you one thing. The way to get somebody out of office or change office is to vote. And I exercise that right, and I'd rather encourage people to vote than encourage another, you know, bureaucratic law that will put limits on stuff when, you know, the answer's already in your fingertips. So that's, that's all I've got on that. Okay, this is our last question for the 
entire group, and then we'll go on to the questions specifically for the mayors. We had several questions regarding parks uh, in the city of Eau Claire. Uh, many questioners cited the lack of maintenance in existing parks and the need for new facilities like bike paths. Does the city have a parks development plan, and what is your vision for the city parks in the next five years? <laughs> I was waiting for you to come to me first all night. We're just um, shifting. I know, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I mentioned earlier that I think parks and recreation are critical. I do think we need to figure out a way to find more space for our kids. I actually was in the neighborhood uh, a couple days ago where the, I think this 15 acre proposed park had been discussed. I don't know a lot about what happened with it or why it didn't happen. Um, but the, 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 these folks took me in their house and said, come on back, I want to show you this thing. And so I went in their backyard and we looked over the fence and, and uh, you know, it's just a pile of, I don't know what, dirt and mostly and, and uh, grass and some other stuff. And, and in fact, he told me it's a place where sometimes the city comes and puts their sandbags and things and whatever. Although he was very nice about it, he wasn't complaining. He said, listen, I called the city and they, they came and fixed a water issue I had here. But the point is that and I, you know, you go and look at the, the current ballparks and the, and the rec center, and um, you know, it ain't great. So, you know, a lot of people want to bypass. The problem is, where do you get the money? So the city can only afford so much. There's been a lot of discussion about budgets and fiscal responsibility, and you know, I think that's something that we should try to create as a priority. But as I said earlier, um, and I've talked to a few people about this that do these sorts of things. There's opportunity out there. There's grant money out there. I mean, if we had a great plan put together, maybe as part of our three to five year strategic plan that the city needs, um, that looks at parks as part of that and maybe some bike paths and so on, then you could go to work with businesses and, and the grant money that's out there and you get some partnership going. And it's not all city funds that has to go do that. So I think it's a great idea. I think it should be something that we prioritize as we look at our budget and as this FIP money starts coming off and the debt starts coming down and we have more money to work with, uh, we definitely need to do that. Yes. Well, this is a topic that is uh, extremely near and dear to my heart. Uh, I served on the park board from 2009 to 2014. Um, those of you that don't know, we have three parks in McLaren. We've got Scout, we've got Hollyhock, and we have a planned park that was on, that's in the city of McLaren's long-term plan called Huckleberry, Huckleberry that is up by the water tower. Um, around 2011, myself and the park board sent out a survey to all the residents of LeClaire saying, hey, if we built a park, take funding out of it, if we built a park, what would you want? We have those survey results. Everybody want, everybody in LeClaire wants the facilities. They want the basketball courts. They want the multi-purpose schools. They want, I've even heard things thrown, thrown out there about a, um, a, a water park. That's tough in Iowa. We have some winters that we have to deal with. But those are great ideas that we can consider. The key here is that when I was on the park board, we managed the growth and aesthetics of both Scout and Huckleberry, Hollyhock. The challenge with Scout is we have five parking stalls to eight parking stalls. It's tough if you want to take and have an event up there. At Hollyhock, it's a, it's a really, really good facility, and we've seen growth, and I help manage the areas where we, we took trees out that were dead, we brought in new um, new swing sets, we put in new mouth, uh, mulch, we put in new barriers. All those things, things are important. But for a younger town like LeClaire, where we see younger people moving into the area, those two facilities do not compare one iota to other cities surrounding us just two or three miles away. So do we need a plan? Absolutely. The challenge then, just as Dennis said, is how do we fund that? And that's an area that if you were involved and you give us ideas, a grant is a great idea. You know, I was in favor of merging the Park and Rec Board when I was on the Park and Rec Board. Now we have the Park and Rec Commission. So those are all key components that as we move forward as a city, the Park and Rec is really going to be a key component to attract new residents and younger, younger adults into the uh, LeClaire area. Thank you. <coughs> I think everybody would like a better park system. The problem is money. Uh, I think a good grant would be great. But, you know, we can't, or at least in the short run, we can't. We have to figure out how to create the money to make these things work. And, and we can start by taking the existing parks that we have 
and seeing can we do something to them to make them more usable. And we, you know, we talked about improving the ball fields. That's a much easier thing than starting all from scratch and, and, and creating a new park. We should be able to create better ball fields that our, that our young kids can play on. As for a new park, though, uh, you know, we're in a situation now where our budget, our operating budget is about almost $200,000 in the red annually. And we're carrying, as, as the mayor said, over $52 million in total debt in the city. I mean, our, our debt per person, even, even without that much debt, only without the tip debt, we're the 12th highest debt per person in the state of Iowa, 955 cities. And that just severely limits what we can do. Everything we do now requires a bond issue or a raise taxes or something like that. And in the park would be no different. And that's just being honest. Uh, we need to get that in, in good shape. Take a look at, you know, and we do have a study that has started with an outside consultant to look at our city operations uh, and the money we spend, compare us to other cities, see where we might have opportunities to save money, get that deficit cleared up and start uh, operating in the black and then maybe we can start finding some allocations to the park system and some of that hotel motel tax. That is supposed to be used for these purposes. And maybe we can take a piece of that and, and use it for that. But uh, without some serious planning, we're in real trouble on doing anything serious with the parks. Well, parks and recreation always has been a high priority for me. I had five kids. Uh, I coached Little League, softball, and we did all the volunteer work that we had to do to keep the parks going. We didn't get any help from the city. The city now does do the mowing. They do as much as they possibly can to try to help them. Yes, we need to upgrade them. We need to upgrade the two we have. We also tried uh, back in, uh, I think it was 85 or 86 when I was mayor, tried to sell Scout Park to use that money to help build the park that we have out there. Well, all the neighbors at that time, there were a lot of kids over there, so they didn't want that park to go, so they come to the city council and they spoke their piece and the park is still there. But my understanding, they tried to sell it again in around 2002, and that didn't go anywhere either because Really, nobody really wanted to buy the land. But we do need uh, to do something with that park out in, because uh, when I was mayor, I helped purchase that land for a park. We have two sets of plans sitting at City Hall that the city council paid for to be able to put that park in with ball fields, tennis courts, um, basketball courts, a picnic area, a, a, help, a, a nature trail all that is in those plans but nothing has happened 2010 the city council decided that they wanted to build that park and put the money into it there was a petition put together to stop it and had to go to a reverse referendum and with all the negative uh, part that was put out there the city council decided it wasn't worth trying to waste the money to do it so that's where we're at right now. We still need to work on the park, and that's a priority of mine. Well, parks have not been a focus of mine for the past year. Uh, when I took over Judy's seat on the council, um, I was fortunate enough to be uh, handed the, the uh, uh, streets liaison uh, position. Not necessarily fun for anybody who knows the history of the streets. Uh, I live in the Bluffs area. I live on Cloverdale Lane. Uh, and just so you all know, too, my street had to get taken off the list. So no preferential treatment going on there. It was slated to get this fixed this year. It got moved to, uh, to next year because it was a lower priority than some other places. Uh, prioritizing this is a lot of tough decisions that need to be made at the council level. A uh, number of people here have mentioned uh, you know, some of the cash crunch that we have, uh, we have not a whole lot of extra money laying around to do stuff. Um, you know, I don't know, I don't necessarily try to solve everything through government. Like I said, parts part have not been a major focus of mine in the past year for other reasons. I've been, you know, we've got, um, everybody has a certain area that they're supposed to be liaison for. So uh, I've tried to focus on uh, IT 
even though I'm not officially liaison for that, I don't think, at least on the website, but I've tried to focus there because it was something that I was already doing and also on the streets. Um, I'm not exactly sure what we can do as a city at this time, um, but I do know that I don't let that stop me from you know, moving forward. I don't think that everything necessarily has to be done through government either. Um, I have, uh, just recently, I attended an informal meeting up at the Ball Diamonds, and you know, there were a lot of great people there. There's a guy that has access to, um, uh, to some heavy machinery that would be willing to uh, donate those times and resources. Uh, I have a lot of resources that I can call on, so I think that there's a way uh, on privately, um, just on a personal basis, and if that's what it takes to get it done, that's the direction I'm going to go. I'm not going to hope for something that's probably not going to take place soon. I'm going to find another way to get it done, and uh, I, I'll continue to preserve from that angle, and that's about it at this time. Well, we have the new parks and the rec board now. So the parks, the rec, and the levy have been combined. And I know we've all been talking about parks, but it's a little more than that. It is also recreation. And there are entities out there that are willing to serve. The Optimist Club is one that gives free basketball, and the city provides free use of the gym for them. There's many people who pull weeds and do quite a bit of maintenance in the parks that we have. What we need to do is instead of the city spending tens and twenties and thousands of dollars on some study for a park, is let's work with what we have. Let's clean those up. Let's spend the money there. Let's look at our comprehensive plan for the city. What is the plan? We've been working with the Mercer Group, which is what Ray Allen just talked about this year, where they've interviewed us and we've talked about parks and how important that was and where do we want to see this town in, in five years and ten years. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do that in phases. We're going to have to phase it in. And that first phase is going to have to come from maintenance and um, pulling together as a community and using our resources as our people and the things that they have um, available to them to pull this off. And the clock is looking really weird, Jackie. You gave me like five more minutes. You don't want that. <laughs> But yeah, okay, oh, two hours. No, I'm just going to say right now, vote for Terry Applegate. <laughs> well, we first want to thank all the city council people who are running for city council. Um, we thank you for your um, answers. Uh, we now want to uh, ask a few questions for the two mayor candidates. And uh, my question uh, what is that there were several questionnaires that asked about LeClaire's debt load uh, and they cited by almost as being the debt as being 50 plus million dollars. Two specific questions are being asked. How did we get this much in debt? What did we buy and how are we going to pay it off? That's one question. And the second question is why do some say that TIF debt is not real debt? I wonder if you could both answer that. How did we get there? Okay. I have to say that most of the things that I see in our current debt load, and there's two aspects of it. One is TIF, and that's 30 million or so. Debt rebate debt to developers, and then there's other debt that's on our balance sheet that's in the, the 20 million plus range. That debt includes wastewater treatment plant that had to be redone. I mean, we, we were out of capacity with it. It was old. It was not working properly. It took a lot of maintenance and so forth. That's a that was a big deal. That was I don't remember the number exactly. It was probably eight or nine million dollars. Um, we have uh, street repairs like the Bluffs project that we talked about, very expensive. But you know, you, you would look in there and you wouldn't see things that you would say, boy, that was stupid to do. And there was just no alternative. We had to do it. We didn't have that money in our treasury to pay cash for whatever needed to be done. And, and that was the only option. So, uh, will it be paid off? It will be paid off. The debt itself, I mean, it sounds huge and it is. The biggest issue with it is that it impacts everything else we do. It gives us no cushion when we have the special things to do, unusual things come up, 
we just have no cushion to uh, absorb those. And we have to borrow again, or we have to raise taxes ultimately, which might be the result of that. But essentially what we do is we borrow. Uh, we've had to borrow $12,000 of issued bonds for $12,000. That's how tight the budget is now until we get through a process of reviewing our finances and figuring out ways to save money wherever we can. And eventually, some of that TIF money, some of those TIF programs will start paying off for us. Uh, as to the uh, TIF being real debt, it is real debt. Every dollar of that $30 million will be paid. It's going to be paid from tax revenue, and it will be paid every dollar. Well, Ray's right. TIF debt is real debt. But the, how does that TIF debt get paid? A TIF debt gets paid where the TIF areas are at. The people that live in those houses, the commercial businesses that get TIF, their taxes 